Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the 2019 Maricopa Meadows Open presented by Dynamic Disc. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, along with, again, special Arizona guest commentator Pete Ulibarri. Pete, we're moving into Championship Sunday. Lucky Disc Golf, PDGA are supporting us and we're back at Copper Sky. What do you think we have in store today? Um, we got a bit of challenge. There's, just like Maricopa Meadows, there's OB everywhere. There's uh, OB everywhere. So keep it <laughs> in it bounds is. and you're going to probably win. All right. Well, we've got Anthony Barella on the tee. They're on a rock. Yeah. Looks pretty good. I imagine this is a buzz. Yeah, and Paul, uh, after his round yesterday, is sitting just a stick behind Anthony going into this final round. Him and Austin have kind of switched spots. Austin was sitting in second, and Paul was in third, and then after the round yesterday, mm. they reversed. and He did what you don't want to do there. Yeah, that's uh, OB on that right side, exactly where you don't want to be. See Novak's on the lead card again. He's... Uh... Played the lefty right out wide. He's probably about 25 deep of the basket, would you say? Yeah, just about. Maybe uh, right around that pin high. Pretty good looking shot. And here's another guy that uh, I just met last November, Alex Miller. And that one turns over for him. He's going to be out of bounds. But Alex uh, performed very well at the Next Gen Tour uh, okay. last November. So uh, it's great to see him. And he's uh, relatively new to the game, just uh, you know, the last few years. Awesome. I'm looking forward to watching him play. Uh, this is the first time I've been seeing him. Yesterday we talked about Austin's very casual approach to the game and yet still very effective as he's uh, trying to save the par there. He's just over the basket. Let's see if AB can cash this. He's in. Yeah, the, uh, a great adjustment. Uh, on the opening round, he actually had a similar putt that just barely then went out of bounds past the basket on the putt. So he opened with a bogey. And today, uh, that's a, a great two-stroke improvement. Ooh, he makes good. It catches right side for him. Let's see if Yui can put it in. The challenger. Looks like he's sticking with the challenger to start off the day. Yeah, and he also had a little bit of a rocky start during yesterday's opening round uh, in the morning. And it looks like today, a little confidence booster to get him going on this very first hole. And see a little bit of everything here. There's a couple birdies, a couple bogeys. We're going to move on to hole two. Ah, there's your mom. There on is. the bag again. <laughs> Quinny, thanks for being a sponsor of hole two. Uh, real danger here is just deep of the basket. Uh, that's where you can find the OB. Well, don't let your righty hyzer uh, get too close to the left side. I decided to go catch the uh, catch camera angle. It's a good this angle. Time. So this time I'm going to be basically right. You can see me. I'm standing in the OB. So if you get it all the way to me, you're in trouble. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Just a little hyzer action out there, uh, making sure you have the right speed on it, 339. Some of these guys could easily go past the basket. Jeremy going with the forehand. One of my initial impressions of this course when I when I had first seen I came out and played it in about 30 mile an hour winds, and they said, what would you think of it when I got back to home? And I said, well, they've got a really nice uh, water slide. <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh, a lot of the same kind of shots, um, and it feels a lot a lot harder in the wind. It's calm. I feel pretty good about the course. Yeah, and we definitely made note of that, or I should say we being just me, made note of that, and that's a park job by Alex, uh, that the winds have been, I'll say, relatively calm over the, the entire first day. We had a little bit on Saturday afternoon during round two, but the winds have been somewhat calm, and uh, creating some really good scoring conditions for these players. For sure. Honestly, like uh, I would have expected a whole lot better scores 
with the way the weather was, but there's enough OB to keep you honest. Certainly, and uh, I think it took six or seven holes uh, during the opening round for Anthony to get his first par. He had a, a handful of birdies and a couple of bogeys, and it took him all the way until like the seventh or eighth hole to get par. And uh, nobody's thinking about par here. Is yeah, Paul's opened up with back-to-back -back birdies. This hole here is is on the course. There's several of them. This is a must-get. You really don't want to miss this hole. This perspective as Barella goes two for two to open the round. This perspective does give you an idea of just how close that OB is mm -hmm. from the basket. If you do go deep, you only have about 15 feet at most. This going back to what we had talked about before is uh, if you look at the grass here, it's dry. It's in its winter. Um, and that's the Bermuda grass as opposed to what they have growing during the winter out at Maricopa Meadows. And so this grass plays a little bit faster. It can skip a little quicker. Uh. All right, well, we'll see how that plays out. William and Jay are our sponsors as they give you a little of the scenic view. Any idea? I'm sure you can tell me. If you can tell me what grass that is, you know what mountain that is they're about to throw behind. Let me see. Right past uh, over there where I was just uh, a, a moment ago. Do you know what mountain range that is? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll put you on the spot. Oh, no, and for the second day, Anthony goes deep of the basket and finds himself OB two times in a row. He's got to rein in that power now and then. <laughs> Those young bucks. Yuli out in the open, pretty easy uh, look at the basket from there. It's looking like it's coming in pretty good. Yeah, these shots are just go out and, and throw them. And I know that sounds mm -hmm. like an all too obvious statement, but when you're not worrying about the wind, you really just are, are going out and you should be able to put it on the exact line that you want. And then you should get the exact result you were planning on because you're not, uh, you know, compensating for any wind out there. Absolutely. Yeah, it's important to slow down there. Yeah, I think he's going to like that. Slow down perfectly. Alex has uh, been a really good putter. We've seen him. Oh, okay. Cashing <laughs> yeah. it in. I guess I was just going to say, we've. Uh, I've seen him make some really solid putts. He has a, a very uh, consistent routine. And I've just been so impressed, as I think he said he's only been playing seriously for a couple of years now, if even that. It looked like it was a solid routine. Nothing fancy, nothing flashy. Just get your head in the right place. and That's a good putt there. It is. And he starts out with three consecutive birdies. And just like that, he's momentarily tied up for the lead. And we see Anthony... Now, when he went OB yesterday, he was at least 50 feet to the right. So he wasn't able to take the the save. He didn't uh, walk away with the par. Here he's got a much better look at saving the par. Par for Anthony. Stretch and... out the muscles. and <laughs> He probably just rolled out of bed, too, when he got here. <laughs> and he just uh, looks like he took off the sweatshirt he had on uh, on the opening hole. And uh, your brother Paul is officially tied up with him after this third hole, which is pretty exciting. I know we're going to have a great battle. Absolutely. Watch Novak tap in. Solid birdie. All right, Michael, we appreciate the support. We're going to take a little walk over to hole four, just under 300 feet and... Seems like up and over is the play. I'm... For sure. You want to uh, put your hyzer up. Just don't get too um, aggressive. Uh, but you want to you want to let it have it a little. Uh, slight slope that you can land it on puts you within 30 feet. Right there, he's probably 25 to 30. Yep, just a little bit short. The mistake to make is uh, to go long. Uh, well, if you're going to make any mistakes, I should say, you want to be short. Absolutely. Uh, just right where Paul is or even 
possibly there where Alex is. Uh, the road is probably about 20 feet behind the basket. Yeah. He's, he's not going to have to worry about much with that one. <laughs> no. Trying to go for back-to-back -back CTPs. This is one of those rock catch basins that, um, where did his bounce to? Uh, just the left. I don't think, it did not find the OB, uh, but it is definitely left of the pin. Mm. Right next to it. This is one of those rock catch basins. You want to be a mountain goat to make it through. It's, <laughs> it'll take every ankle movement you've got. Well, and that was one of the questions I asked here and on 16. Oh, uh, on both here and 16, I asked in the opening round, would you change up your disc selection? Would you bring a special disc just for this shot, knowing that you're probably going to do a little bit of damage to whatever Frisbee you're throwing? And uh, oh, Paul misses mm. for the first time. Uh, Pete, I'll quickly ask you that. Do you, do you even think about that, or is this just uh, one more hole on the course and you're just throwing a regular disc? Um, it's one of those things I like to chuckle and say, hashtag sponsored. Uh, <laughs> there you when you're go. blessed to be sponsored, you know, you have your babies that you don't want to break too much, but um, in tournament, it's worth more as a birdie than it is as a disc. There you go. Okay. So uh, I, I, I'll throw whatever I know is going to get me there. Let's see. Barella along with Austin in for the birdies, as is Novak with the park job. The, the disc I actually part. threw on this. Um, it actually took a pretty good chunk out of the <laughs> there you go. chunk out of it. And... Well, we're going to spoil it for everyone. Pete uh, played in your first ever PDGA Pro Masters event, and you won it. So uh, congratulations to you as we're watching the action here on the MPO yeah, thank side. You. That chunk Here's... out of that disc was great. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No big deal. Here's... Thanks, Floyd, for everything you do for the Arizona disc golf community, including sp sponsoring the coverage here today. Hole A, I moved down kind of closer to the basket. Uh, it's a little bit of a blind shot, so that's why I'm down here, and you can see just how close that is to OB, but he's safe. It's a wide open shot. Um, just hang it out there, let it do its flight pattern, and just get in the ditch. Um, Anthony did about the only thing you don't want to do is hit that tree, and he still is fine with it. Yeah, I'm guessing he would have been about 20 feet from the pin, and instead he's 22, I think. Yeah. Great I think shot, Jeremy tested, tested the, the deep OB more than anybody really would mm -hmm. because of the angle of his shot coming in. And that one just didn't have enough power. Yeah. You know, it was, it, it, maybe he let up. Maybe there was a something weird with his release, but just flat out not enough power to get it there. And Alex is hanging out plenty wide. And uh, he'll have a look as well. Yeah. That was a long putt. It was, yeah. And... and I was saying yesterday, I think he's just trying to find his exact stroke on some of those longer ones, and that's a great putt there by Novak. Absolutely. And there's a lot of air hanging around the basket, whether you're putting downhill or uphill. It's, it always challenges your brain to just let it go. <laughs> With the length of Anthony's arms, some of these putts are probably five or six feet shorter than the average person. <laughs> That's true. Well, and Barella now has gotten back-to-back -back birdies, so back on hole three, things were all knotted up, and now here we are on, uh, at the end of the fifth hole, and he's back to having a two-stroke advantage. And at this point, it looks like, you know, uh, Paul and Anthony are kind of pulling away from the crowd as they've got at least three, even though Austin just took that birdie. Yeah, um, look forward to seeing it shake down as we get into some of the more challenging holes coming up. A couple of the long par fours in store, back-to-back -back par fours, in fact. And with that, we're going to take a look at hole number five, 369 feet. MVP caddy extraordinaire this weekend is Brittany, also our sponsor. This one's tricky. 
It is. Um, lots of really, how would you say, grabby uh, brush. There's a fence right there, yeah. the construction fence that the uh, organizers put in to kind of make that OB line a little more penalizing should you hang it too wide. It actually ended up as a really good benefit for Jeremy there. AB looks like he parks it. Those poles come into play a whole lot more than you think if you can't get <laughs> just that high. I, I believe that. I, in fact, I'm surprised that during the opening round, I didn't see anyone uh, hit one of those poles. And right now, I think we're 8 for 10 of staying clear of them so far. We were two for two on each round. <laughs> wow, okay. So ding, the Masters ding. played this one a little differently. <laughs> we used the pole and parked the hole. I mean, it was just, boom, it was right in there. And that looks like just about the right speed and angle. Paul pinched up on this left side. He's got a little bit of work to do. Eh, he makes it look easy. Yeah. Those bushes right back there have thorns that are about six inches long. Hmm. And like you said, that fence there actually out of bounds to the right of it. And so that stopped that lefty hyzer coming in. And, and I don't know if there's anything stopping Anthony right now. It's another birdie. He's going to extend his lead over Paul to three, and he still has five clear of Austin. Like he said, once he gets his putter rolling, um, he's a very hard guy to to catch or even stay with. And those are always the best putts, right? The ones you can do with your driver for the tap-in birdie. Absolutely. Hole six plays as an island. Chris is our sponsor. 239 feet. And uh, I moved down by the basket here again, just trying to give a different perspective from round one. And uh, yeah, that's easy, easy. <laughs> I get that he's playing into the hillside and actually just trying to take out a little more of that OB area, but I think that's a really interesting play. Very trusting by Austin to throw that forehand there. Yeah, it's pretty tight off the tee with the bush that's right there. Ooh. Go, go. go. <laughs> it's pretty wide. Let's see how close he gets here. Ah. Yep. He, like Anthony, has nine foot arms, though. He'll be able to <laughs> reach pretty close, I think. And this is going to need a little more angle. No, and it doesn't find. You know, the, the, the right side of that spine, so to speak. Well, it finds the right side, but that's the wrong side. Oof, did that make it over? I don't... I believe that it did, but the question was whether or not, um, you know, he really should have moved to the drop zone or not. Mm. So I think there was a discussion about uh, a, a provisional and how this exactly gets played out. Okay. So he's kind of playing it right now as if he should have moved to the drop zone or shouldn't or didn't. And now he's going to go back and play it from the drop zone. So a provisional was called. And I think we can peek in on a little conversation here in a moment that they're going to have among themselves. Okay. But he's uh, he has thrown that shot as a provisional uh, because there was some uncertainty for how to play it. Alex, meanwhile, is uh, in the walk away with a birdie so paul has thrown like five shots consecutively oh, yeah. and everyone else is like all right we're, we're ready to play <laughs> definitely the background sounds of a little dog park action i was gonna say if he's gonna keep barking please keep barking don't stop yeah. bark right <laughs> in the middle of the stroke that's definitely the most distracting right yeah, yeah they have that consistent noise. Jeremy's trying to get a little bit creative. Pretty close to the basket, and there he is. Yeah, that's a great putt. So 
Paul's playing it out the other way here. And Anthony, all this time, just waiting to collect uh, another birdie. I believe they uh, discuss it a little bit here, maybe. Okay. No, well, maybe not. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I may have cut that part out. But Dan and Colin, sponsors here on Hole 7. What a beautiful view. Absolutely. Such a nice day. Uh, this hole's, what was it, 712 um, feet. You want to keep it in the middle of the fairway. Anthony's off to the left-hand side. Those bushes come into play a lot. Um, the main mistake is don't hang it out too wide. You want to get past this um, water canal. Yeah, or as I called it the other day, a train. <laughs> train track. It actually looks like a train track. I'll give you it, that. <laughs> but thank you for the clarification on the YouTube uh, Absolutely. page there. Oh, and, uh, he gets a yeah. skip out of that. Yeah, that's a great shot, though. I mean, as an end result, that is exactly where you want to be. Yeah, perfect. Now, over here on this left side, um, it's actually the grass field to the left that's OB. This uh, gravel and um, up to the curbing on the right side of those trees is in bounds. And also perfect placement there by Paul. Garden parking, that's where you want to be. As you mentioned, the OB is on that right side, and then also just all those bushes and trees on that left side. Uh, if you get pinched up against some of that, you may not have a clean approach, and we saw that in the first round. And uh, Anthony here also may not have a clean approach or a clean look. He's going to have to get a little bit trickier than what we just saw from Paul. And his standstill proves to still good. be effective, yeah. <laughs> we'll see if Alex can take advantage of his perfect dr or initial drive. And looks like that one was coming in a bit hot. A little hot. He should be okay. Um, he's been putting on a slight straddle. And uh, that'll be beneficial when you get into these these bushes and trees, you can always get your stance a little more clear. And Jeremy way on the other side, which was actually in bounds. Uh, it was, I was a little confused as I was standing there as to what was going on, but he was in bounds and there was Alex who ultimately skipped into that bush and he just really had nothing. So he was just uh, had to lay it up. There it is. Yeah. I like that. There's a couple of these bushes, I'm pretty um, neutral. And there's a few of them that have, like I said, they have thorns that are three to six inches long. And <laughs> oof. Um, there was provision given by the TD on a couple of those, those really thorny bushes that you could take stance behind it. Um, huh, I didn't, I don't think I realized without, that. Without getting forget how he worked, how he worked it, but, um, so it, it was basically just a danger to be in them. So well, we see a, a bunch more birdies here on hole seven, uh, Sam and crew. Thank you. Big shout out to them along with lucky disc golf, of course, for helping as our presenting video blog sponsor. And, Looks like uh, they're making moves in the disc golf world. They are. They're doing great things. Excited to see it. Dave's our sponsor. We're going to take a look at hole eight. Anthony's got a little insight for us right now. If I do that, I'm going to square it and go OB right there. Are you? Are those flippy? Yeah. They're mm -hmm. pretty. The wolf, I don't know. This one is just because it's been yeah. worn in. Yeah. What's the plan here, Anthony? Um, I don't know yet. I'm just trying to get better than the five. Because that's what I got yesterday. Yeah, that's why I'm probably going to go for it. We won't talk about that. <laughs> All right, a little destroyer action. And uh, as he says, he just wants to improve uh, on the bogey. Absolutely. Now, this one is similar in nature. 
uh, except for you're on the left side compared to the previous hole, hole seven. But uh. <laughs> he called it. <laughs> if I do that, I'm gonna square it up. He said. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, some of those times I feel a little awkward because I'm like, I'm I'm sorry, I just recorded that. I didn't <laughs> but, mean to laugh at you, buddy, but I mean you. You you threw it. <laughs> I expected of you to for me too. If you see that. <laughs> Uh, Yuli with a really good, safe-looking shot. It's all, almost a little distracting to see that disc just uh, 25 feet off the tee pad, too. Mm -hmm. That looks like it should be a good spot there. Yeah. We'll see if Jeremy gets a little creative. Huh? He just goes with the turnover. and What a smooth stroke. Absolutely. I really like that one. So he's got to worry about the hillside. He's got to worry about, uh, you know, the angle, of course. So this, uh, this is far from an easy approach. And now he's, you know, 600 feet away from the pin still. Uh-oh. Oof. Yeah, not enough stability on that one. It's very hard when, you, when, you're, when you're throwing off of a downhill lie. It's easy mm -hmm. to uh, hold the shot. So he did call provisional just okay. in case somehow like his disc wasn't out of bounds, but uh, we'll find out that it definitely was out of bounds for sure. And it looks like a pretty good approach shot from there. And Alex has hung out a little bit wider. It was tough for me to follow that one. Looks like it's all right. It should be in the circle. That's what it looks like, at least. Uh, I think yeah, the AB was, a... was in bounds. He was in bounds. Okay. Uh, but definitely, you know, off on that left side. Oh. Here we okay. go. <laughs> so he's found himself in a mound, and now here's Jeremy. And although his turnover looked really smooth, he had nothing to get out of there, unfortunately. Just getting up and down. We take a look at the scores. Jeremy's got a long bid right off the basket, but uh, Anthony's sitting in that four-stroke lead. Uh, however, Yuli there um, trying to get back at him, and Anthony's going to crawl up the... <laughs> it's actually a big pile of composted manure. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's um, possibly as unpleasant as you would think it is. I, I'll I'll say this: it didn't smell, so to speak. Uh, you know, it wasn't anything overpowering, yeah. but not something I would want to be crawling in. <laughs> no, not necessarily. I mean, it's it's mixed with some other composted material besides, <laughs> but um, still is what it is. Yeah, and your brother, just for the record, was laughing hysterically pretty much at this point. He could not get enough of this. And unfortunately, all of that effort doesn't result in a birdie. Now, he, he did bogey, and he's looking just to still improve on that, and it looks like he's setting himself up for it. But <laughs> Yeah, I, I had heard about the, the, big, the big manure pile for a while. They've... They're competitors, but like the disc golf community is, everybody really enjoys these, each other's company and ribs each other for hours after each round. <laughs> We wouldn't be a big Frisbee family if we didn't, right? Exactly. And Austin, uh, after the OB stroke. Oh, no worse than yesterday. That's the sad thing. As bad as that looked, same score as yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> as bad as it looked, he said same score as yesterday for him. All right, 290 feet up against the fence of... Uh, the baseball diamond here. We saw a lot of forehands. Seemed to be a really smart play. We saw play a roller off the fence, and I moved down near the basket to give you guys a different angle this this round. Looks like he's tracking in all right. Below the basket, you can give it a solid run.
Alex with a much higher, tighter approach, but as effective, if not more. He's got the trees cleared. Almost spoke too soon. <laughs> well, a little friendly roll at the end. That works out just fine. And something very overstable. I believe that's a firebird for Anthony. The way it was tracking, it looked like it. Hmm. A little kiss off the tree, a little flop and a roll, and everybody's on the dance floor. Exactly. Nobody rolled the fence. Good putt by Paul there. He said it's, you're, you're below the basket. It gives you almost a really a green light to be aggressive and not worry. Momentarily, Paul's pulled within three here of Anthony, but Anthony's might have a response to that, and looks like he does. He says, come and get me. <laughs> and Austin, at the moment, six back. He's trying to make that just five. No big deal. Easy birdie. Ten holes to make up five. It's a tall task when you're talking about somebody as talented as uh, Anthony is. Exactly. The pressure builds and you just start. You really got to focus hole to hole. If you don't do that, they can run away a lot faster. Yeah, a lot of pros will tell you you got to be worried about the only shot that matters is the next one. And uh, like you said, focus on it one at a time. So uh, I think we got a star frame, though. Five birdies. And move over to hole 10. Christy. Helping us out, 412 feet. A fence, but in a slightly different position, and OB on the left side here as well. Oof. Did that catch the fence and kick and roll, or did it just cut roll off the hill? I, I think it kind of caught the fence and and to be fair he he can't say too much he got a great kick off the fence in the first round yeah and the, and then he capitalized and so that one might might have been trying to even the score there for for the yuli fence kicks on hole 10 and that one's out of bounds almost in the soccer field over there for yeah. alex now this fits jeremy's style perfectly And he looked yeah, this hole sets up really well for him. Looks like it sets up pretty well for a, a Borella forehand, too. Yeah. He... <laughs> he got over on that one. Yeah, I don't know if that was his wrist or if it was the disc, but did stay clear of the out-of-bounds and Beautiful Sunday morning out here at Copper Sky. Uh, Pete, this course has not been in long. Has it been less than six months or so? Something like that, I think. Um, I've known about it for about that long. So I suppose that could be... Uh, I think it started off as a nine-hole course, and then they added more holes later and kind of re reorganized what was already there. Okay, yeah, and I know uh, the Ace Hardware locally, uh, along with the Disc Golf community, community getting on board, and uh, adding another course to the city of Maricopa and another birdie for Barella. I know at one point uh, Eric McCabe was actually consulted and brought out and uh, was part of a design. And it, just as you kind of alluded to, I, I think they kind of used some of that framework and then expanded on that and, and I think had a little bit different vision from what McCabe did. I think so, uh, yeah. As he was out there for sure. This park is actually pretty new it's uh maybe mm -hmm. two years old um the, the mayor price has done a lot for this town and and making things grow for them and giving them places to recreate and and uh communities growing it's good to see that they've got disc golf near the baseball fields uh, i know oftentimes it can be challenging um 57 feet for hole 11 uh Sidewalk plays as a river OB. Um, 
But that dirt patch in between the sidewalk and the ball field is in bounds. So rather interesting setup. Oh, and there's one of the poles mm. as he was just about to come back in bounds. And also a quick shout out to Steve, who was our whole sponsor here. But yeah, Borello with a little bit of a mistake. This might be a an open door for the second and third place chargers. Yeah, Paul well, didn't really get a hold of that one. This one sets up well again, back to back. Big lefty hyzers for Novak, and it looks like he didn't get a hold of that one either. This hole feels tricky. Um, you're really wanting to get in between those poles or, or you know, get down the fairway, but it, it's hard to judge the distance or believe that it's 357. It feels shorter. Um, and when you let the disc go, you, you start just praying that it'll keep going. And it can't carry too far because, yeah. as you said, there's a, an OB just past it. So I can understand. I mean, if you're, if you're going to make a mistake, you'd much rather be short here than long. Mm -hmm. But if you do go long, you, you're hopefully going to be right near that basket. This is one, if you, uh, if you get the birdie on it, you're, you're pretty much making a stroke on the field for the most part is what I felt. Didn't see too many um, birdies on it, and AB lets that one slip out. Wow, so back-to-back -back out of bounds shots by Anthony. Mm. Very close. And so Austin, <laughs> and just like that. That was a very pretty putt. Yeah, and he moves to 22 under. He takes the birdie, and, and Anthony's lining up what I believe would be a double bogey, and things are are going to get a lot tighter here in a moment. Alex connects on his probably 25-footer. Yep, very nonchalant. And after hitting that tree on the approach, Paul still has a pretty short one, so he can walk away with the par. And Anthony, like I said, bringing it back in bounds, and just like that, a double bogey. And he had a five-stroke lead a, m a moment ago, or six-stroke lead over Austin, that was. And that's uh, trimmed all the way down to three, just like that. He's within reach now. Here's a tricky one. Uh, Ozzy's the sponsor at 360 feet, a mandatory light pole that's on the left side. So really, that only impacts Jeremy and his big lefty hyzer. Yeah. I believe this um, path right here is considered inbounds. It's just the fence on the right-hand side um, Thank you. is out of bounds. I'm not sure if deep of the basket is. I'm it is. There's a line painted down there on the on the path okay. also. So Alex is going to take that out over the OB and out of focus there for a moment. It was one of the few shots I couldn't track, and he almost wow. puts it in the basket. Good thing I panned over. <laughs> A pretty good power shot there. I, I, I said it back in November, and I'll say it again. He has very unassuming power. He, it doesn't even look like he's trying to throw it that hard. Yeah. And yet it's always very, very effective. And that's also a great shot. Absolutely. Puts him within range. Let's see. Well, he's got the forehand for it. Uh, flirting mm. with one of those posts. And there <laughs> flirting he Flirting with the second post on the way back in. And I dream of throwing a forehand with that much uh, precision and distance. And ease. Yeah. And Anthony, I believe that's like a, possibly like a T-bird or a okay. metal flake T-bird or something. You just... He goes way lower than the rest of the group. I thought that was an interesting, um, you know, or contrasting approach than where everyone else we saw go with the hyzer. And a little bit frustrated here is yeah. he might be feeling a little bit of that pressure from both Austin and Paul here. Well, when he doesn't put it in, and if they get it in, it's... Make it that much tighter, and he's within two. Just like that, you know, the door is open, and we're going to see if uh, one of these guys can jump through it, make a charge, if not both of them. See if Anthony can right the ship. 
get his uh, head back in track and um, make some clean throws. It's, uh, it's hard to be in the lead sometimes, especially when you've made one or two mistakes and, and, and then to wonder if the wheels are coming off and then have to wrestle with yourself about that. Yeah, and you wonder if he's kind of reflecting there for a moment. He's very slowly walking up to his lie and, and uh, puts in unenthusiastically. Yes, that was the so smoothest, gonna... unenthusiastic putty. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Holly, uh, great content producer and just all around nice guy, is our sponsor here on hole 13, 376 feet. And harsh OB on this entire left side. In fact, you're throwing from the OB sidewalk out into this wide open field. And you really got to be careful about a skip. You can really miss it about 500 feet right. <laughs> but 20 feet left of the basket is out of bounds. And so it's close enough. It's within range that every one of these guys should have an opportunity to get at it. Um, mm. That makes it hard. It does. And we saw your brother go out of bounds during round one, but he went out of bounds basically right where the basket was. So he was easy, easy tap in for the three. And he makes a pretty good adjustment there. Maybe not quite enough power, but like you said, there is a lot of room on that right side. Just make sure you get it in bounds. No. Ah. Uh, that's surprising to me. Uh, especially after just seeing his effective forehand. Is that what you're thinking? Well, well, that and he's got power for days to take it high if he needs to or not play it so wide. You can just send a frisbee shot down the sidewalk and let it skip skip this is how i would think of it i guess but he's uh he knows his game way better and, and that's way better <laughs> than the first one so paul trying to pull within one just kisses off the side of the basket uh, from the tee, it looked like he was maybe even a little bit closer. Kind of surprising to see him that far away there. Yeah. That was a clean putt. And just like that, Austin has momentarily pulled within a stroke. We'll see if Anthony has an answer for it. He does. Makes good. His walk is a little happier. <laughs> Ooh, even a twirl of the disc there as his... Locks are flowing in the wind that we feel picking up a little bit. This would probably be setting right around what, about 11 o'clock in the day. Yeah, sometime. Yeah, that's that's probably about right. A couple hours into the round with, you know, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours into the round on this Sunday morning. The air's warming up. It's going to start moving around. You get that flag going multiple directions. And not a bad parse, or uh, correction, not a bad bogey save uh, for Jeremy after going yeah. OB and essentially having to re-tease. So here's Roger as our supporter, 422 feet, OB on the left side and behind the basket. And Pete, does this play longer than 422 even though it's dead flat? Yes, I would agree with that. It um, You have a lot of room out right. Uh, you feel like you want to throw it tighter to the left. Um, maybe just because you want to turn it over or, but it feels like it plays a ways. I'm going to call for a measuring tape. Go over to our friends at Ace Hardware and uh, pick up a, a measuring wheel or, or some binoculars or something. It just, it felt to me, seeing them come up as short as they did uh, in the opening round, it kind of felt like, man, is this really just 422? Alex puts a really good move on it. Goes kind of with the low beeline approach. And he's wide of the pin. Is he going to be safe? No, he does not get the magic roll we saw during the opening round. Put it in the shrubbery. There's Jeremy hanging it wide left, but that should come right back. Oh, he's within range right there. So Paul is 
putting for three or approaching more like for three to save the par and oh well, looks like a day to go fishing too yeah there's bass out there in that lake And for the first time, we're really, you know, I know you just mentioned it, we're kind of seeing a little bit of wind movement on that flag. Yeah, we'll see which way the flags move um, throughout the round. I'll try and pay it a little more attention to that. It's, uh, as the air moves, mo heats up, it moves around. It begins pulling tailwinds and headwinds. And Jeremy makes it good. Yep, and Barella a little, like we said, a little extra pep in his step after that solid putt. And Austin inside 25, and and Pete, just like uh, you know your grass, you know your wind, uh, you you uh, have plenty of experience with both drones and, and what are the planes that you uh, also go out and compete with? They're discus launch gliders. Um, they are super lightweight and essentially just fly them like with hawks and, and eagles and how they soar on the air currents. I use, use uh, the air currents in the same way. So you study the way the air moves and, and uh, it's helped a lot in disc golf. I, I'm sure that it has as you're a, a lot more uh, astute to some of those uh, things that are happening up in the air than most of us. And that looks a little bit tight for Austin. He's on that left side, but he's safe. He's wide Austin. enough. Um, he's got to really hope that that's going to come and not take out the tee pad. Well, well, <laughs> man, you see those guys uh, taking cover. Almost took out Steve Gailey. And there's the skinny route. What do you think of that lane? Um, I saw a lot of people uh, mess with that route. A couple lefties mess with it. Um, a couple people throw forehands, and he actually did that just about perfectly. You can hear Paul say that's money, and it looks like it's pretty good. Got a pretty wild skip, but still on the dance floor. Yeah, and right now it looks like Paul's fallen back a bit after the bogey on the previous hole, not converting on a couple of those birdies. And uh, he finds himself the third man on the podium as of right now. So we'll see if he can make things up. We've got just a few holes left to play. Yeah. A little tricky spot. Mm. <laughs> Good bid. And Austin, who had the tee, did look like it carried quite a bit left. And yeah, he's momentarily still two behind. Now, Barella is looking at a, a birdie putt, not quite the same distance, but coming from the opposite side. Oh, there's the train I was talking about. Yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Just a few hundred feet off. <laughs> <laughs> And Barella right doesn't take advantage, no. so uh, it looks like they're going to remain just two apart from one another. Nice. Yeah, and if, if there's a pro tip to be said about Alex and straddle putting, if you straddle putt all the time, you're almost never going to be in an uncomfortable position yeah. because... You know, a lot of people kind of have that, you know, staggered or forward putt as uh, Jeremy taps in for birdie. And that's great. You know, that's the majority of our players. But even when I started playing, I always thought, well, if I just straddle all the time, I'll never feel like I'm, you know, in an awkward stance or out of position. So, and Alex seems to have it dialed in. You might sacrifice a little bit of the power, but uh, position might be worth it. Williams, our sponsor, and hole 16. And I asked the same question on 16 as I do on four is, you know, you, you could beat up a disc here, but is it is that worth the birdie? Uh, I think it is. There's several routes on this now. Um, you can go straight up the gut with the mid range. Uh, most people are just gonna most of these guys are just gonna throw a hyzer and get it on the dance floor. Um, not take any chances with some funny skips. 
Yeah, I think just playing it out and around, you know, trying to take any of those shrubs in your way, just take them entirely out of play. Just throw up and over them. Yeah. Most of these trees, uh, about a week and a half before the event, had not been trimmed. You couldn't see the basket when you uh, were on the tee in the city. Oh, wow. And trimmed a bunch. Huh. Okay. Interesting to know. Yeah, you can see some fresh cuts on those trees. So a different look if you were out there practicing a week ago. Yeah. Hmm. AB tested the OB area over there, um, <laughs> but he's safe. Mm. Yeah, and that's kind of surprising. Paul started out with like exactly where you wanted his putting stroke to be. I think he got the first three birdies in a row and everything looked good and confident. It seems like some of that is, has eluded him as we move through these final few holes. Mm. And Alex, who I, I would have put money on that. You said, hey, I'll, you know, we put five bucks on him making that putt. I would have taken it all day. Sure. Surprised to see that misfire. Hmm. And the pressure mounts. So Anthony doesn't make the birdie and a little uh, bit high and tight there for Austin, but that pulls him within one. We got a ball game. Not really. We got a frisbee sure. game. <laughs> and uh, the consummate professional in Yuli, even though he's seems to be falling back a little bit, still making sure to give the the low five there and recognizing that Austin's uh, shooting quite well. And right now he might be out of that running, but we're still seeing that good battle between Anthony and Austin taking place. He loves seeing good golf. So a few more unenthusiastic pars, unfortunately, because that's, that's one you definitely expect to get when you walk up to hole 16. And we just have two holes left to play. Jason, Anthony's dad, is our sponsor. As we move over to hole 17, 346 feet. There's an OB sidewalk, and it plays along a, a spine or a hump that can easily push you OB. And yeah. I'm back down here at the catch to kind of try and give you the best angle. Yeah, you get on the top side of that, that spine, it, it runs away OB really fast. Um, the hole feels like it plays further than it does, but it's really just... Put an easy move on the disc, let the disc do the work for you. And uh, it's really hard to do that on this tee. It just feels like you have to throw a hard driver. Well, and that one got up in the air just a little bit. I both, I think both him and Jeremy flirt with the OB. I'm pretty sure they both stayed safe. We'll take a look in a moment. And that, that feels just about right. Just yeah. play it out. Like you said, let the disc do the work, play into that hillside, and you should be there putting. I made the mistake with this hole of thinking you had to throw it harder than you did. Um, it always felt like it was like 380, and <laughs> I'd have been happy to throw a 300 and have a 45-foot putt. <laughs> Let's see if Paul can connect on a long one here. Nope, and not not the step putt. Uh, he's kind of uh, been famous for this step putt, and we haven't seen too much of that. I talked to him after the round, and um, back on the short forehand hole that was the ball field, um, he threw a forehand and ended up pinching his shoulder. And so I mm. think uh, he said he just couldn't quite get his arm to move correctly after that. And as you saw, it looks like he was just OB by inches. And just off of saving the par by inches is Alex. So he's going to drop a stroke. Would you rather be OB by a mile or by an inch? You know, that's a great question. And I think that's a great question for our viewers. Uh, I'd love for you to leave that in the comments. That'll make you eligible as Anthony's taking another birdie. Uh, would you? Yeah, when you walk up to a, a disc or your drive, would you rather uh, just have it be over that line by two inches and, and B.O.B., or would you have rather have just missed it by a good 10 feet so there was no question? Leave that in the comments and let us know, and 
regardless of what you pick, you're going to be eligible then to win a little uh, Disc Golf Guy swag. I'd rather be OB by inches if I'm answering. I, I feel like then I know I was pretty much there, and it just maybe got a bad kick or a roll, but uh, psychologically, <laughs> you're like, ah. I agree with you. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, Vincent's our, our sponsor, and, and how would you answer that one, Pete? Um, I would want to be out of bounds by an inch, but a definite inch. <laughs> sure. And if I'm not feeling too happy about it, I'd rather be out of bounds by a mile, just so I know. <laughs> All right, so we move into the final hole. Austin is down a single stroke, and what a charge he's made. He's perfectly navigated the mandatory, and it looks like Anthony has pretty much done the same. We'll see what they both have left for putts. But this comes down to the final hole at this point. Mm. And, uh, Fortunately, Jeremy, the lefty, who this sets up for, doesn't quite make the Mando. Well, that's up for the uh, card to debate, it looks like. Yeah, and uh, I think we are going to hear a little bit of that debate. I believe so. I, I think I left that into the edit uh, as to whether or not Yuli missed it, and it looks like Alex has missed it as well. We saw a couple of metal hits from the drop zone during the first round. Oops. <laughs> I, I actually just wiggled my head to the side to try and look around. And <laughs> I know. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when our players, no matter where I stand, they you know inadvertently walk right into your line, and so we didn't get to see it go in. But what a par save by Novak Absolutely. to close out the day. Oh. Alex almost makes the par save. And they did have a healthy discussion as to whether or not that, you know, cleared the top of the tree and made the Mando or not. And the group ultimately said, you know, uh, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. And Yuli gets to line this up uh, as if he did make the Mando. And he's lining up for a birdie. There you go. Again, secures his spot in the event. Yep, I think ultimately he's going to finish third and uh, a solid performance. This is Anthony Barella. If he can put this in, he can officially close this out. I don't care who you are. When you got a putt like this for the win, you still think about it for a second. And there it is. Then you shut the brain down and let it fly. There it is. The young gun from Arizona. Great performance out here. Uh, and as Alex taps in for his bogey, and we're going to see Austin tap in for his birdie, I want to thank you again, Pete. And uh, with that, let's check out what Anthony Barella had to say after this big win. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, buddy. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and that was my video blog. I've caught up with our champion, Anthony Barella. And, Anthony, it was three years ago at this very event you were – a little shorter, I think, and you were accepting cash for your first time ever. Here you are, three events into 2019. You've got two wins, and uh, including this weekend. How does that feel? Um, it feels awesome to start the year off like this. Um, I definitely did a lot of work in the off season, and it definitely shows because I started off a lot better, averaging way above my rating, and yeah, it feels great. All right. Well, there's been, of course, a lot of talk throughout the last couple of years about not only how old you are, you're 19, yep. but what your plans are. You're done with high school. Uh, what, what can we see from you this year? Uh, definitely I'm going to do a full tour. I'll be at all the tournaments uh, with my touring partner, Adam Hammy. so that should be fun. So, yeah. Wow. So uh, early spring uh, action, I should say, or winter action here in Arizona. You bested uh, Austin Hannum just a few weeks ago at the Shelly Sharp today. Got him, what, just by a single stroke overall? Yep. Uh, you guys going to, is this a, the official start of a rivalry? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I hope not. Austin's really cool, but he's definitely a solid player, and he always pushes me to play get or to play better. So maybe if he wasn't here, I wouldn't have played as good. But yeah. but you want to beat him every time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, enough of that. All right, so uh, really fun weekend. Three rounds, 19 holes each round. Uh, any keys to success out here specifically? Um, definitely my putting. This weekend, I made a lot of putts, and yeah, 
I just threw consistent all weekend and played about the same round each round, so it definitely helped. All right. Well, a little format change. It's been great being here. I've got to thank, of course, Lucky Disc Golf uh, for stepping up and being a huge supporter of the video blog coverage, along with Dynamic Disc, who's your presenting sponsor of the tournament, and Sam and everyone else had anything to do with all the Maricopa action here. Chris Cobb running around all weekend helping out, my host Boyd, Pat Perman, everyone else out there uh, as part of the action. Congratulations. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to be talking to this young man quite a few times in the future. Anthony Barella, your champion here at the Maricopa Meadows Open.